Welcome back to Couple of Games. I'm Ivy. And I'm Gabby. And we're going to be playing Destiny with the best setup thing for recording that we've ever had. Joke, joke. Um, <laughs> joke, 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 joke. Yes, we finally kind of figured out console games. But with this setup, we have the recording going on to a USB off the console and the voice coming from my phone. Center. Until we figure out something better. So this is the loadout screen that we're going to go over real quick before we step into uh, the actual thing. thingy. So I'm running Gunslinger. I'm just going to go over real quick what I'm doing. I'm running Swarm Grenades, Triple Jump, Gunfighter for faster golden gun, and Sendry Blade for burning fucking knives, double knives, and picking up ammo reduces the cooldown of my throwing knives at my grenade. I'm also running max armor, max agility, tiny recovery. I'll be running Ace of Spades, the hand cannon, as my exotic, then as my primary. This may be switched up for the Continental, which is an auto rifle that has high stability that I really like. I'm running Uzume as my sniper rifle. Love the way this gun handles, and it has a scope that highlights enemies. Running Hunger of Crota, which feels kind of like a slightly less powerful version of Galahorn over here. The main difference is that the Hunger of Crota, the rockets, when they cluster, they go in an area of effect instead of targeting back onto a thing. So it's less powerful for bosses, but more powerful for um, mobbing. Now, if I do switch my primary and my exotic, it will be switched to Sleeper Simulant, which is a great boss weapon, as you can see it with its maxed out impact there. I can't believe I've always called it Sleeper Stimulant, but there's only one T. Yeah, I can understand it. Simulant is a weird word. It is. I'm also going to be running the Kingslayer shell. Um, running Unyielding Cast. The only reason I'm not running the Acolophage symbiote right now is because it has intellect strength, and with that I don't have enough discipline or strength to maintain a 300-300 between the two of them to keep it tier 5. Um, so I'm just going to be running the Unyielding Cast because it's actually a pretty decent one too, and it looks really nice, which you'll see later. Running the Slight... Nanomia grasps here you can Spliced. see. Spliced. Spliced Nanomia grasps, whatever. It's a weird thing. But it looks uh, damn cool. It does. It's amazing looking. Uh, it has some really decent perks on it as well. Running the Racky Poltergeist. Decent perks on it as well. High discipline, high strength. Running Racky Poltergeist again. High discipline, high strength again. Uh, this one is something that I'm actually looking at, uh, hopefully upgrading, getting one that has a higher discipline strength and a better thing than the respawn. Cloak of Tanix, it's a cloak, and I'm running Memory of Scory. The only time I really change this out is I change it for Gallon every once in a while, particularly for PvP, just because knowing where people are is a little bit more powerful than having a super for your allies sometimes. So, that's the loadout, and we will be joining you in a strike right now. Doop doop, and we're dropping into this mission. If we talk over this exposition-y thing... It's on screen! So you can read it. I don't like this mission. Okay, but, um, <laughs> welcome back to a couple of games where our recording setup is, um, a bit Still MacGyvered. Shit. It's a bit MacGyvered. Well, this is the same episode. We were just literally just talked about this. Regardless. <laughs> um, so I don't like this mission because of the final boss. The final boss is an absolute dick. Oh, yeah, this is the... The restorative mind. No, this is yes. the Black Garden, is it? Yes! Oh, yeah. The Black Garden but is the restorative mind. But they might not know that. Well, that's why I was going to talk about it, but no, somebody had to... Wait, maybe it's not the restorative mind? I'm pretty damn sure it's... Yeah, I, I think, think it is. it's the restorative mind. Yeah, it's the, find the undying... Find the undying? It's the undying mind. I don't remember... This is their first attempt to try and take back the Black Garden before the taking come in. Oh, so this is the one with the, the fucking Vogue thing, right? I don't think so. That's the, the restorative mind? No, 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 no. The restorative mind is the one where you have the, um, what the shit? You have, um... The restorative mind is the one with the walls and the gaze, right? Yeah. The one where okay. you have the, the undying little mind... blows you have to plug into things. Yeah, the undying mind is either... The one where you're in that room that's basically a long line, or the one where you have to run the relic. I hope it's the one where you have to run the relic. The one with the lo long line just always fucks people over. Always. 
Um, so I might actually be switching off of this because I haven't been do it running hand cannons in a while. So my aim with it is god awful. Your aim is god awful. And I just keep dying. There so yeah, I'm switch is off. your second death. <laughs> so we're gonna switch off to the continental, like I said I would. Um, do I keep hunger of Crota and run all purple, or do I do I take sleeper? Uh, okay, we're gonna run all leave purple. Leave it for now. We're gonna run all purple for yeah, now. Yeah, leave it for now. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the one. Where you run the relic. I hope it's the one. You are cheating that spot so hard, dude. Keep going with it. <laughs> live, Both bastard, live. So there's four seconds before I can come back up. So you can see that in the bottom left-hand corner. And um, since so this is our first Destiny playthrough, there's going to be a lot of... There are going to be a lot of mistakes. Well... And a lot of death. There's going to be a lot of death. There's going to be a lot of mistakes. And there's going to be a lot of me trying to talk about mechanics and stuff. Um... But as you saw, Gabby and I, you know, have played and talked about this game a lot with each other, so we've... You okay, know. so, background history. I have played this game since it came out. All the way back in 2014? Yes, year one, because this is year three. That or 2013 now. now, because year four comes out this year. But... Okay. I played a tiny bit of the beta for this game. I played all of year one. I actually got Triumph for year one. I played all of year two. I've played all of year three. And then I dragged Ivy into it. And I don't let her play anymore. This is... Woohoo! If you want a game that you can constantly come back to... That's this game. That actually. has its... It, Destiny is a comfort game. It has its faults, it has its good points. It's not a perfect game by any means, but it's an all around good, good game. comfort game. It's um, not a perfect game. It doesn't have the storyline of. Oi, shut up for a minute. Let me talk. Uh, There's a YouTube channel called Extra Credits, which does game talk a lot better than we do. Uh, but they don't use as much game footage as we do. They do a really, really good episode on comparing Destiny to Law and & Order and how Destiny is just a good comfort game for anybody to play because it's PvP is good enough, it's PvE is good enough, and the two combine with really good rewards, so you don't feel punished if your PvE-only friends invite you out as a PvP-heavy player. Um, even though I hate PvP. Even though, well, yeah, like, somebody like you who wouldn't play PvP... Somebody like Mime from ER, which will be explained maybe more with some Overwatch stuff, actually, um, doesn't feel bad if you drag him into a raid or into a strike because he can use those weapons and gear he gets to do better in the PvP. It's just the skills that don't carry over as well. Like your actual personal play style. Yeah, because you play them two very differently. Like in yeah. PvP, I would not get away with the amount of bullshitty bullshit I pull off you in would, PvP. You in would PvE. not be hitting those knives and those grenades nearly as well in PvP as you are here in PvE because you're playing against another conscious decision-making player. Yeah. Now, at the same time, I'm pretty damn good with my knives. You are. You have good aim with them. I do very well with my knives in PvP. Actually, I was playing a PvP match earlier today with um, a friend that we made on, through this game just playing together randomly, and I pulled it back really well because I switched up my playstyle and relied a little bit more on my knives because I have two of them and they refresh in about 30 seconds. Um, Ding, there it goes. Yeah, there's the second one back up. Um, so the, the, the shift in playstyle there really helped, but I was also running um, nice. different gear. So there, there's a lot of differences in that game. Um, PvP requires very different gear um, because of a lot of things like in PvE there's a lot of people who will run scout rifles and they're really really good in PvE. It's in not PvP, that it needs different gear, it needs a different approach. Yeah, approach to gear. Like you need to look at the stats differently because you're killing other players mm -hmm. instead of killing, you know, mindless automatons. Yeah. Well, like the main difference is really in PvE, you're looking a lot, particularly for scout rifles and snipers, at impact. That's your important stat. In PvP, you don't care for impact, you care for range and accuracy. And those, where the shit's more things to shoot? I need more things to shoot. Give me more things to shoot. You just wasted your golden penis. Oh, well, I always waste my golden penis. I'm really bad at the golden penis. 
I was running Memory of Fell Winter for a while, which is a thing that makes it so you don't have your super anymore, and in stage you get two melees and two grenades. Uh, quoting, uh, that light up draining yellow bar is your super, or in Overwatch it would be considered your ultimate. Yeah, it's your ultimate ability. Or whatever. Your... Ivy is currently running this character with the ultimate known as Golden Gun, because she's playing the Gunslinger subclass. Yes. The community refers to the Golden Gun as the Golden Penis. Yeah. Because it is the smallest golden penis in the world. Um. It's also kind of... When it comes down to how long it lasts and how much damage output it can do, probably not the best super to ever. No, it's outmatched by basically every other super in the game. The only reason I run this class is because that grenade and the throwing knife. Yep. The throwing knife has the longest range of any melee in the game, and in fact calling it a melee is completely inaccurate. Dudes, wait up! I don't care. I was just wasting ammo on... Ah, uh, it's the long room. This one, we're gonna die a lot. Yay, um, the long room. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pop the four hunger of Crotas into him. Switch to sleeper, and then pick up the the heavy. Cause fuck it, that's what I yeah. need to do. So this boss is gonna have. You'll want to get up high for that because of his shield. Remember? Yeah. Well, I have three jumps. The most jumps any character could... Actually, that's not entirely true. You can have four jumps if you play as a hunter with an item called the Bones of Eo, which is an exotic uh, pair of pants. Exotic weapons, you can only have one of them equipped at a time, which is their downfall. Well, you can only have one weapon and one piece of armor equipped at a time. Be correct. Okay. Re regardless, you can only have, you know, one of each type equipped at a time. So that's their downfall. But their advantage is that they are generally really powerful gear that have... Don't get hit, and you're dead. There is good... Silver contender! Uh, stats, yeah. So this guy's going to be able to revive me here, and I'll be able to and pop two ding. more onto him. So I have second win. That's from my boots. I hit my boots. My boots are kind of shit. Okay. You fuck. almost blew yourself up hitting the wall. Good did job. I wall? Yes, oh, you fuck. did. Okay. I'm going to die here. I'm going to hit with a grenade. Oh, you're okay. not dead. Awesome. I didn't die. Um, so I have really low recovery, which is your stat to get your health back. Um, it's actually, well, technically, yeah, but it's, yeah, fuck. you're dead. It's the stat that ta the changes the time it takes for you to be able to start regenerating health, not how fast you actually regenerate your health. It's the delay between when you've last taken damage and when you can start regenerating health. Hey, cool, I'm in cover now. Three, two, one... Oh, sweet, I'm starting to regenerate my health and shields now. Thank you. As opposed to me, where it's like, okay, I've been in cover for, like, the last two minutes. Why am I not, re you know, regenerating health? Okay, I've been in cover for the last 20 seconds. Now I start regenerating health. Is more accurate. Yeah, well, let me, you know... Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. There we go. The thing almost... Um, yeah. Okay. Ow. They spawned right on hey. top of me. That was really bad. Oh, you paused it back? No, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. I thought I did, but I didn't. Oh, okay. So everything's okay. Cool. See. My screen turned off, and I thought... <laughs> oh, Striker Titan. And oh, Superman! He Your missed. aim is shit. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, do the Titan thing and punch him in the face. Oh, he did the Titan you thing and You died. died. Okay, I'm up in four seconds, so that'll be fine. That's another hunter. You can tell because of their cloak. Um, we typically. call it the cloak, or the blanket. I just call it a cloak. She's weird and calls it a blanket. Well, I, I shift between blanket and cloak. I just call it a cloak, because that's what it is. But uh, the titans have the butt cloth. Yes, the titans have the butt cloth, and warlocks have... Uh, I'm gonna die. The bracelet. The bracelet, or... The armband, or... I just see them wearing cloaks, like full-on warlock... Like, you know... Trench coats. Mythical warlock coats. Like mythical trench coats. Yeah. That's what they wear. Um, you'll actually probably see me with my warlock in a little bit, because they've almost hit 40. They're level 32 right now. Level 40 is the level cap for this game. Um, Currently. Well, and it'll probably go up with Destiny 2. Destiny which is 2's right now is 20 and 200 light, according to the gameplay reveal that oh, we saw. Oh, that's right. We go down. Because... Because we get the living shit kicked out of us. Yes. Um, you need to keep your volume more even, by the way. Me? Yes. Sorry. 
Because when you're uh, saying something that's detailed, your voice drops Sorry. in volume. Um, oh, cool. That guy put him in a really tough Die. spot. Die. Die. So that's why Down. Sleeper is, like, amazing, because you just do so much damage Please. to people. Please die. No, we're not going to get on this run. We're going to have to wait for him to get somewhere. Oh, God, I'm going to die. And there it goes. Nope, I'm not down. Die. Oh, shortest sure, golden the, penis. If I'd gotten the second shot, that would have been it. We just need the second shot. He's a Night Stalker. He's a Night Stalker, which is good. And we have a Striker Titan, so we have all three elements, at least. Yeah. Um, but it's not like this is the Nightfall, where you need a specific element. Well, we don't need this for this Nightfall. This Nightfall was also Arc Burn. This isn't a Nightfall, though. No, it's not. So the Nightfall is a weekly event that is a story mission, but really, really fucking hard. Yeah, it's basically a story mission with a bunch of added, well, what's called skulls, aka buffs and debuffs. Some of Ooh. them are good, some yeah, of them are bad. And it makes it harder. It's also, um, what is it? Not heroic, but ultra? Yeah. Ultra level difficulty, uh, so which means there's stupid more damage. super more enemies, they're more powerful, that kind of thing. And it just makes the fucking mission You have harder. half an hour to complete it, and to put it into reference, earlier today I tried it with another player, um, and we didn't complete it in half an hour. Well, you're supposed to complete it in half an hour to get um, the special weekly... Rewards. Reward. Regardless, in half an hour of trying this mission, we didn't complete it. We didn't actually nice complete it. Nice team score, though. Hmm. Oh. And you get to... Two modes of light. <laughs> Which I do not need. <laughs> for, for all of your crap. <laughs> so, modes of light you can use to level up your gear. All of my gear is already leveled, and I have about 300 modes of light sitting in my inventory right now. Which you're going to lose in the fall because literally everything gets reset. Yeah, so I have a, a 311 of them. Um, but So yeah, that was a strike. Um, we'll show you the tower real quick uh, and how this works for collecting loot. Uh, it's a weird system that I'm not entirely sure I like. I understand why it's the way it is. It makes it easy to kind of gate power leveling. It's harder for somebody who's maxed level to take somebody who's really low level and run them through a really hard mission really quickly and give them really high level gear. But it also really sucks because it's difficult for people to grind you. You have to do the grind the way they've made you, um, which is bit by bit. So as you'll notice, every piece of gear has a... Okay, I won't show you. Um, we're going to go talk to this guy. He's the Cryptarch. He Master Raoul! Yes. Cryptarchs exist in all of the social spaces, which is the tower, the reef, and the iron temple. Mm -hmm. uh, and what they do is they take these engrams here, and they give you possible items. So you can get a rare item, which is blue, which is what I got. You can get legendary items, which are purple. Or you can get exotics, which are yellow. So this is blue, so it's useless to me. Um, <laughs> it's basically how it works. Um, at this point. And for, yeah, for me, because I've gotten to the point where I'm at. Oh, click within agendas, discipline, strength. Is that better in any way? No, it's not. So no, 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 no. Look at it. Look at it. Discipline's down. Yes. Strength is For down. For now. If I put the one up, but it puts three, it shifts the three, I don't like it as much. I will put it back to my Cloak of Tannix, because I like the way the Cloak of Tannix looks. So yes, this is the other thing. So there's this thing called infusing, where you take an item that's better, based on the big yeah, light letter, which is the light level, and you put it into something that has a lower light level, but has other things that you prefer. Oh. So in this case, for me, I like my Cloak of Tannix, so I put more light into it. And this will eventually upgrade this big number, which is my light level. Did it not go in? It did. It's 397 now. It was 394 before, because it was paired with What is that third cloak. one? It's a Titan thing that I'm going to save for my Titan. Uh. If I ever get my Titan up to 40 by it before reset, which I probably won't, but oh well. Um, so yeah, you've before seen this... Before the fall. Yeah. Resets are Tuesday. Weekly reset, I mean game reset. Anyways, yeah. Um, so yeah, this is the thing that you saw at the beginning of this episode. 
and we'll probably wind up doing an episode talking about just Destiny gear and crap. While Destiny I... gear, backstory, you know, juicy content. Juicy, juicy content. Yeah, yeah we'll yeah, do yeah, that. Yeah, we'll yeah, probably yeah. do that over top of some Destiny footage, either a raid, a nightfall, a strike, maybe even some Crucible. We'll It'll see. probably be some Crucible or some strikes. Yeah. Or some story missions. So we'll see you in the next one. Until then, enjoy yourselves. <laughs>